be temperamental. So we say Shabbat Shalom to all of our Mishpaka out there. Hopefully, now you can uh, hear me. Um, if you can hear me, just, you know, let me know. Just type in there whether you can hear me or not. And I know a lot of you are probably um, restarting your system too, so. So I'm praying that um, you now can hear better if you would just um, refresh your screen. Maybe uh, it'll start to work correctly. Because what I did, I restarted the broadcast um, so that we could have a clear uh, broadcast. All right, now we can rock and roll. So, the Father put in my Ruach to um, just, and we we'll, might do some discussing, but he put this finding yourself in Psalms 119. Because what happens with all the things of life and all the things that we go through and we are up against and you know the challenges that come our way it can be very easy to lose your way it can be very easy to forget your purpose to forget what you're supposed to be doing because you get sidetracked and I don't know about you, but I've been sidetracked before. And it's not easy um, to recover sometimes when you're sidetracked. So hopefully going through Psalms 119, I don't know if we'll finish the whole thing today. Because the whole, whole Psalms 119 is written... Um, is written is laid out according to the Hebrew alphabet. So every letter of the Hebrew alphabet you're going to see there, except the final forms. So we're going to kind of walk through that and just, you know, talk a little bit. So sometimes it's good to talk. Confession is good for the soul. And I have, I have a lot of people that email me or text me or message me. And I do take the time to read what they send because I know that sometimes where people are located, they don't have anyone that they can talk to. So this is their outlet. This is their lifeline. So, you know, understanding that and responding back is crucial for them. And this I get. And this week has been... I would say it's been a very unusual week. Things have transpired that um, if I were to look back and I would say, no, nah, that couldn't happen. But anything is possible. Um, you know, especially when you're pushed to your limit. When you stretched as far as you can be stretched. And now you're just looking for relief. And that's where sometimes it leaves us looking for relief. Now, we, we should be finding our relief in the word of Allahim. Because that's where we trust and that's where we believe. But oftentimes, we don't find, seek that relief there. We might seek it with other people. Um, their words of comfort. We might seek it. Uh, some people will even go as far as wanting to end their life because they've stretched and they've taken as much as they can take. So my um, hope is to redirect you, to help you to find yourself in Psalm 119. All right, let's pray. Baruch Hashem Yahuwah Elohim Malachi Father, thank you for every person 
under the sound of my voice. I pray, Father, that for those that are searching for themselves, that this search would be uh, concluded today because they'll find that the very words of Psalm 119 resonates in their spirit, resonates in their soul. And they can feel the word of Elohim drawing them closer, telling them to cleanse their hands, to purify their hearts so that they can come closer to you and feel that assurance and feel that security and feel the comfort just being in your presence brings. Now, Father, I pray for those that have no hope, where their hope is left, that you will restore their hope. Let them understand the process that tribulation, work of experience, experience hope. Let them, let them know that the trying of their faith worketh patience. So I'm just asking you, Father, to be in this, these, I won't even call it a lesson today, but just as we read through Psalms 119, let your words just jump out to them and grasp them where they are and how they feel and hold them, Father, because nobody else is there to hold them. Be with them, Father. Because nobody else is there right now to be with them. Father, you can do this. And we trust and we believe you to do these things. In the name of Yahushua HaMashiach. Amen. All right. <clears throat> now, what we're going to do, Ms. Baka, we're going to read uh, Psalms 119 using the King James. And we might even do a little Septuagint or LXX. The objective is to help you find yourself. Sometimes we get discouraged. We do lose our way. It happens. Psalms 119 will show us where we can find our true selves. So be encouraged, Miss Baca. Find yourself from olive to top. Because that's what it's going to read. It's going to go through every letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Okay, so let's go here. Wrong one. Right one. <laughs> All right. So the first section is olive. Now, if you know, um, pictographically, it's an ox head. And it means strength. So where are you going to gather your strength? Right here in this olive. So listen. And I'm going to read from the King James, but if you want to read, this is the Septuagint over here. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law or the Torah of Yahuwah. Blessed are them that keep his testimony that seek him with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. So this is where we have to find, we have to keep his testimony. Now you might ask, well, what is a testimony? Let's go look. He's a witness. It's in a, a technical sense, a testimony. A witness, abstract witness, is a recorder. So, odd, and then of course our word here was da. That is what He's asking us to do. We're witness to his greatness. Now, if you don't realize his greatness, after this lesson is over, just go out and look. Look at how he put things in motion. 
Look at the grass. Look at the trees. Look at the animals that he created that regenerate themselves after their kind. Look at the trees that grow. Look at the wind that causes the trees to go back and forth. Look at all his greatness. It even says the heavens declare his esteem. Look up at the sky. All these things he created. And we have to see. Let's keep going. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. Then shall I not be ashamed. Then I have respect unto all thy commandments. So these commandments play such a huge part. It's not picking and choosing which ones you want, but they all play a big part. And if you want to find your true self, start keeping his commandments. That's when, because that's what you were created to do. And when you keep his commandments, it brings out that blessing that it talks about in Deuteronomy, where things just will start to sprout. Now, granted, you're going to be tested. But when you keep his commandments and his statutes, it does something. It, it aligns your whole being. And now your real purpose really comes forth. I will praise thee with uprightness of heart when I have learned thy righteous judgments. That's mitzpah, pot. I will keep thy statues, chok. Oh, forsake me not utterly. So in the olive, where your strength lies, your strength lies in keeping his statues and commandments. So for those that might have first joined, these are laid out, they're acrostic. So what that means is everyone is assigned a olive bet. So we just did olive. So this is, this is where your strength is. Now, when we get to bet, we're talking about a house or a tent. So everything that we're talking about in this song deals with his house and what can be in his house. And what he desires in his house. You don't want to be outside the house. You want to be in the house. See here, bet. Okay. So what's the first thing he tells us in this bet song that's being, uh, that's being played out here? Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his ways by taking he there according to thy word. So in this house, the words of the, the sovereign of the house is what does the trick. <laughs> so if you're a young man and you want to cleanse your ways, you take, take heed to his word. With my whole heart, See, it's nothing worse than having someone living in your house that's half-hearted. I want you to think about that. People that are in your house, whether they're your children, loved ones, and they're half-hearted. They're not about what the house is about. Now, I want you to put this in the Father in, in his view. When you're in his house, but you're not about his house. So when you're in the house, you have to be all about the sovereign of the house, what he's about. So this psalmist says, with my whole heart, 
I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Blessed art thou, O Yahuwah, teach me thy statues. I want to know what your house is all about. I'm in your house. I want to follow your rules. This is, this is what the psalmist is embracing. And you have to ask yourself, to find yourself, you have to embrace his rules, his reign. What he desires for you. And you have to speak accordingly too. With my lips have I declared all thy judgment, all the judgments of thy mouth. So listen to this. He's listening to what's what the sovereign of the house is speaking. I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimony as much as in all riches. I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. I will delight myself in thy statues. I will not forget thy word. Now we come to Gimel. Now Gimel here usually denotes, um, you could say a camel. Or ca and it looks like a camel's foot. And Usually when you see Gimel, it, 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 it expresses lifting up. Okay? So, if you want to be lifted up, this is going to tell us how to do it, the process. So, I want you to listen real closely. Because when you start to look at these song, this songs from this perspective, each little portion, it will do something different for you. Gimo. Deal bountifully with thy servant that I may live and keep thy word. Okay, so think about it. To live is to rise. To die is to descend. So he's asking him to cause him to live so he could keep his word. Now, keep in mind that the word, the bar is so important. What the father has spoken for his house. Open thy my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out there law. Okay, if you want to be lifted up, you're asking him to open your eyes. And notice what the Septuagint says. Unveil thou my eyes. Because sometimes there's, there's something covering your eyes. So, and I shall perceive wondrous things of thy law or thy Torah. So the unveiling, the opening. Of your eyes. Now notice what. When, when you start to be. Um, uplifted. You're going to notice something. I am a stranger in the earth. Hide not thy commandments from me. My soul breaketh for the longing. That it has. Unto thy judgments at all times. Thou hast rebuked the proud that are cursed, which do error from thy commandments. Now, if you remember in the book of James, it talks about that if you want to be closer, that you have to humble yourself. Okay? But if you lift up your but if, uh, because remember, for before a camel lifts anyone up, it gets, it goes down. And then it lifts up. Okay. 
Remove from me reproach and contempt, for I have kept thy testimonies. Princes also did sit and speak against me, but thy servant did meditate in thy statutes. So in, in other words, when people speak words, the words are meant to hurt you. But when you meditate and do his statutes, those are designed to pick you up. Thy testimonies also are my delight and my counsel. So just thinking about his word, just thinking about his him should lift you up. Now we go to Dalit. Now what does Dalit have to do with? Dalit is door. Okay. The door. Remember, Mashiach said, I am the door. If you go up any other way, you're considered a thief and a robber. Okay, so let's see what he talks about the door. Dalit. My soul cleaveth unto the dust. Quicken thou me according to thy word. I have declared my way. And thou heardest me, teach me thy statutes. Make me to understand the way of thy precept. So shall I talk of thy wondrous works. So you remember that old show, The Price is Right. And they would have curtains. Curtain number one, curtain number two, curtain number three. So when you need to be lifted up, let's turn those curtains into doors. Which door do you knock on? Do you go to the word of Elohim? Do you go to the world? Do you go to other people? Where do you seek your encouragement? Where do you find yourself? See, this is what it's all about. Finding yourself in these psalms. Asking yourself. Make me. Listen to this. This is almost, this is a petition here. Make me to understand the way of thy precepts. So shall I talk of thy wonder, wondrous works. My soul melted for heaviness. Strengthen thou me according to thy word. So you notice the psalmist felt healthy, heavy. But he asked for strength. And maybe that's something we need to add on to our prayer request. We'll, we'll ask the Father, Father, strengthen me. But a crucial piece is strengthen thou me according to thy word. Remove from me the way of lying and grant me thy law graciously, thy Torah, thy instruction. I have chosen the way of truth. See, here's the door. I chose my door. I'm opening this door. I have chosen the way of truth. Thy judgments have I laid before me. I have struck unto thy, stuck unto thy testimonies, O Yahuwah, put me not to shame. I will run the way of thy commandments when thou shalt enlarge my heart. Okay, now we go to hay. Now, some people say hay is a, a window. And you'll often see hay, they, they identify it as a man standing with his hands in the uh, air saying, behold, or look here. So here's, here's this psalmist, behold, or look. T 
Teach me, O Yahuwah, the way of thy statue, and I shall keep it unto the end. Okay, we're going to pause just for a quick prayer. Because somebody earnestly desires to be taught. And we're going to just pray that the Father would teach them, show them. Father, we count ourselves unworthy to approach you. We just ask you, Father, to strengthen us according to your word. And our request is for the, that person, Father, that's yearning, saying, teach me, O Yahuwah, the way of thy statutes. I pray, Father, that you would teach them. I pray, Father, that you would give them understanding and wise counsel in your statutes. That they, Father, might keep him unto the end. In the name of Messiah Yahusha, Lord Yahuwah, Amin. Give me understanding. Being. And I shall keep thy law. Thy Torah. Yea, I shall observe it with my whole heart. Make me to go in the path of thy commandments. For therein do I delight. Incline my heart unto thy testimonies and not to covetousness. Turn away my eyes from beholding vanity and quicken thou me in thy way. Establish thy word unto thy servant who is devoted to thy fear. Turn away my reproach which I fear for thy judgments are good. Behold, I have longed after thy precepts. Quicken me in thy righteousness. So this is the door that the psalmist wants to see or go through. No other door. He doesn't desire, uh, he don't want to be coveted, covetous. He doesn't desire vanity. All he desires is the word of Elohim, his commandments, his instructions. Okay, now here this says Va, but we know um, Wa and U. Okay. Um, so either way, it is a, it's a hook, a nail, or a peg. It's a tent peg. It secures. So let's find out what secures us. What's going to be our grounding force? So we're trying to find ourselves in Psalm 119. See, the righteous find themselves in the word of Elohim. Let thy mercies come also unto me, O Yahuwah, even thy salvation, according to thy word. So shall I have wherewith to answer him that reproaches me, for I trust in your word. I'm secure by your word. Take not the word of truth utterly out of my mouth, for I have hoped in thy judgments, so shall I keep thy law continually forever and ever. So can, can you see yourself being secured by the word of Elohim? Can you see yourself being secured by it? I will walk at liberty, for I have, for I seek thy precepts. I will speak of thy testimonies also before kings, and I will not be ashamed. I will delight myself in thy commandments, which I have loved. My hands also 
will I lift up unto thy commandments, which I have loved, and I will meditate on thy statutes. That is how you secure in the word of Elohim. Secure. Now, Zion is a weapon. Okay, that's that's what Zion is. It, it was you look at it, it looks like a um, almost like a hatchet, so to speak. Remember the word unto thy servant, upon which thou hast caused me to hope. This is my comfort in my affliction. So you see, there's a fight going on here. So in the fight, I need a weapon. And even, even in the British Hadashah, it tells you that the word of Allah is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. So let's see if the psalmist identifies with that. This is my comfort in my affliction, for thy word has quickened me. The proud have made have had me greatly. In or it says um, the definition to to scoff duration. Yet have I not declined from thy law. I remember thy judgments of old, O Yahuwah, and have comforted myself. So when 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 you have some protection, you can feel comforted. Horror has taken hold upon me because of the wicked that forsake thy law. Thy statues have been my song in the house of my pil pilgrimage. I have remembered thy name. O Yahuwah, in the night have kept thy law. This I had because I kept thy precepts. Now, Chet <clears throat> is a hedge or fence. <clears throat> it's like a protection. So let's see what that is. Thou art my portion, O Yahuwah. I have said that I would keep thy words. I entreated thy favor with my whole heart. Be merciful unto me according to thy word. I thought on my ways and turned my feet unto thy testimony. I made haste and delayed not to keep thy commandments. The band of the wicked have robbed me, but I have not forgotten thy law. At midnight I will rise to give thanks unto thee because of thy righteous judgments. I am a companion of all them that fear thee and of them that keep thy precepts. The earth, O Yahuwah, is full of thy mercy. Teach me thy statues. So surrounding yourself, things can, things will be permitted to happen to you. <clears throat> and this is one of the things a lot of people don't see. When you go back, look through the examples. Did things happen to Abraham? Did things happen to Yitzhak? Did things happen to Yaakov? Did things happen to Moses? Were all these, were, were they tried? Were they tested? Yes. It's going to come. But you have to continually find yourself in his word. That's where your security, that's where your protection, that's where all of your fortitude is going to come. Now, <clears throat> Excuse me. Tet 
is a uh, um, usually defined as a serpent because of how it's coiled or a snake. So let's read that and see what it says. Thou hast dealt well with thy servant, O Yahu, according to thy word. Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I have believed thy commandments. Because I was afflicted, I went astray. Hmm. Notice, went astray, and this is the talk about the snake or the serpent. But now have I kept thy word. So there are places and times we're going to feel off. We're going to feel uncomfortable. Sometimes we even, some of us are going to make mistakes. But you got to realize your mistake, confess it, ask for forgiveness, repent of it. And re that mean, that's basically shoe to return to his house. And then start keeping his word. So because when you go astray, notice it says, because I was afflicted, I went astray. Things can cause you to go astray. Could be a person, could be a situation. Um, but you got to be watchful. That's why he taught, tells us to be watchful. Watch and pray that you, that you don't enter into that temptation. Thou art good and does good. Teach me thy statutes. The proud have forged a lie against me. So this is again, it's like a snake coiling around you. But I will keep thy precepts with my whole heart. Their heart is as fat as grease, but I delight in thy law. It is good. Now listen to this. It is good for me that I had been afflicted, that I may learn thy statutes. Okay, I, I want you to say this one with me, because sometimes we don't, we don't look at things this way. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. So it was good that I went through. It was good that I was humiliated because it's designed, supposed design is to cause us to learn the statutes because it'll bring the real you out. The word, the law of thy mouth is better unto me than thousands of gold and silver. Okay, the next letter is not a Jode, it's a Yod. <laughs> okay, the Yod talks about the hand. And then notice what it starts out with, thy hand. So, do you realize, Miss Baka, that you're in his hand? Did, did you know that? Thy hand have made me and fashioned me. Give me understanding that I might learn thy commandments. They that fear thee will be glad when they see me because I have hoped in thy word. I know, O Yahuwah, that thy judgments are right and that thou in faithfulness has afflicted me. Listen here. Look look at this. I know, O Yahuwah, that thy judgments are right. Sadiq. And that thou in faithfulness has afflicted me. Some of us go through and we we think the Father don't know what he's doing. We don't ask him, Father, what are you trying to teach me? What do you want me to learn? What am I supposed to get out of this? All we know is we're going through. Let I pray thee 
thy merciful kindness be for my comfort. According to thy word unto thy servant, let thy tender mercies come unto me that I may live. For thy law is my delight. Let the proud be ashamed, for they dealt perversely with me without a cause. But I will meditate in thy precepts. Let those that fear thee turn unto me, and those that have known thy testimonies. Let my heart be sound in thy statutes, that I might not, that I be not ashamed. So there you have it. We're talking about his hand. We're in his hand. Sometimes we worry too much about what others in their hands are trying to do instead of worrying about being in his hand. Okay, now we got the cough. The cough is the palm of the hand or the hollow of the hand. Remember the Mashiach talked about no man should be able to pluck them out of my hand. So, but notice you'll see that the psalmist goes to the brink. My soul fainteth for thy salvation, but I hope in thy word. My eyes fail for thy word, saying, when will thy comfort me? So, have you ever had a point in your life where it seems like comfort just left well see you're not the first to feel that for I am become like a bottle in smoke yet do I not forget thy statues how many are the days of thy servant when will thy execute judgment on them that persecute me. Because remember now, I'm in his hand. So I'm letting him execute the judgment and I'm not doing it. The proud have dug pits for me, which are not after thy law. All thy commandments are faithful. They persecute me wrongfully. Help thou me. They had almost consumed me upon the earth, but I forsook not thy precepts. Quicken me after thy loving kindness. So shall I keep the testimonies of thy mouth. I mean, this, this is just so, so wonderful. I mean, if you're just listening, Lamet, that's the staff. It usually has to do with um, teaching or correction. Forever, O Yahuwah, thy word is settled in heaven. So his word is settled. His teachings is settled. Thy faithfulness is unto all generations. Thou hast established the earth and it abideth. They continue this day according to thy ordinance. For all are thy servants. Unless thy law had been a delight, I should then have perished in my affliction. So you have to make his law a delight. It's got to be your joy. I will never forget thy precepts. For with them thou hast quickened me. I am thine. Save me. For I have sought thy precepts. The wicked have waited for me to destroy me. But I will consider thy testimony. I have seen an end of all perfection. But thy commandments is exceeding broad. Okay, mil, that's this is the water. Okay. Or it could be chaos. Oh how love I thy law. It is my meditation all the day. 
Thou through thy commandments has made me wiser than my enemies. Okay, this is, you want wisdom? It's through the commandments. For they are ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers for thy testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the ancient, the king, because I keep. Notice, notice it's not just talking about meditating. It's talking about doing, keeping. Thy precepts. I have refrained my foot, feet, excuse me, from every evil way that I might keep thy word. Now, this is something we need to really take to heart. He said every evil way. Not just the, the evil you consider evil, but every evil way. I have not departed from thy judgments, for thou hast taught me. How sweet are thy words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than the honey to my mouth. Through thy precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. Okay, now we get to noon, which deals with uh, a fish, which is life. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I have sworn and I will perform it that I will keep thy righteous judgments. I am afflicted very much. Quicken me, O Yahoo, according to thy word. Except I beseech thee the free will offering of my mouth, O Yahuwah, and teach me thy statutes. So here... The power of life and death is in your tongue. So your free will offering should be praises to him, esteem to him. My soul is continually in my hand. Yet do I not forget thy law. The wicked have laid a snare for me, yet I err not from thy precepts. Thy testimonies have I taken as a heritage forever, for they are the rejoicing of my heart. I have inclined my heart to perform thy statues always, even till the end. So that commitment to it, I'm giving my life. My life is bound up in scriptures. Okay, the this, this summic is support. I hate vain thoughts, but thy law do I love. Thou art my hiding place and my shield. I hope in thy word. Here's my support. The love of thy law and hope in thy word. Depart from me, ye evildoers, for I keep the commandments of my Elohim. Uphold me according to thy word that I might live and let me not be ashamed of my hope. Hold thou me up and I shall be safe and I will have respect unto thy statutes continually. Thou hast trodden down all them that err from thy statutes for their deceit is falsehood. Thou puttest away all the wicked of the earth like dross. Therefore, if I love thy testimonies, my flesh trembleth for fear of thee. I am afraid of thy judgments. Okay, then I am. I am is your eye. I have done judgment and justice. Leave me not to my oppressor. Be surety for thy servant for good. Let not the proud oppress me. 
My eyes fail for thy salvation and for the word of thy righteousness. Deal with thy servant according to thy mercy. Teach me thy statutes. I am thy servant. Give me understanding that I may know thy testimony. It is time for thee, Yahuwah, to work. For they have made thy law, made void thy law. Isn't that interesting? It's time for him to work. Now, the Septuagint you say, it's time for Yahuwah to work. They have utterly broken his law or thy law. And this is what he's observing. He's seeing. Therefore, by love, thy commandments above go, yea, above fine go. Therefore, if I esteem all thy precepts concerning all things to be right, I hate every false way. Now, here we have the pay, which is uh, your mouth. Thy testimonies are wonderful. Wherefore doth my soul keep them? The entrance of thy words giveth life, light. I giveth understanding unto the simple. I open my mouth and pant, for I long for thy commandments. Look thou upon me, be merciful unto me, as thou usest to do unto those that love thy name. Order my steps in thy word. Let not any iniquity have dominion over me. Deliver me from the oppression of men. So will I keep thy precepts. Now you got to be watch when you saying stuff like this because you're saying if he delivers you that you're going to keep his commandments. And you know how important it is for you to do what you say you're going to do. Make thy face to shine upon thy servant. Teach me thy statutes. Rivers of water run down my eyes. Because I keep. Because they keep. Not thy law. Isn't that something? Okay, next we, we have the uh, Saudi. Which is, uh, usually it says a fish hook. Or some say it's a tool for cutting. Righteous art thou, O Yahuwah. Upright are thy judgments. The testimonies that thou hast commanded are righteous and very faithful. My zeal has consumed me because my enemies have forgotten thy word. Thy word is very pure. Therefore, thy servant loveth it. I am small and despised, yet do not I forget thy precepts. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is truth. The trouble and anguish have taken hold of me. Yet thy commandments are my delight. The righteousness of thy testimonies is everlasting. Give me understanding and I shall live. Now we have kuf, which is the back of the head. I cry with my whole heart, hear me, O Yahuwah, I will keep thy statutes. I cry unto thee, save me, and I shall keep thy testimonies. I prevented the dawning of the morning and cried, I hoped in thy word. My eyes prevented the night watch that I might meditate on thy word. Now, this is what, um, let's look at 40. I, I arose before the dawn and cried and hoped in thy word. My eyes prevented the dawn that I might meditate in thy word. In other words, 
they were so into medit uh, meditating on his words that they didn't want the morning to come. Hear my voice according unto thy loving kindness, O Yahuwah, quicken me according to thy judgments. They draw nigh that follow after mischief. They are far from thy law. Thou art near, O Yahuwah, and all thy commandments are truth. Concerning thy testimony, I have known of old that thou hast founded them forever. Resh, which is the head. Consider mine affliction, deliver me, for I do not forget thy law. Plead my cause, deliver me, quicken thou, quicken me according to thy word. Salvation is far from the wicked, for they seek not thy, thy statutes. Great are thy tender mercies, O Yahuwah, quicken me according to thy judgments. Many are my persecutors and my enemies, yet do I not decline from my testimony. I beheld the transgressor and was grieved because they kept not thy word. Consider how I love thy precepts. Quicken me, O Yahuwah, according to thy loving kindness. Thy word is true from the beginning, and every one of thy righteous judgments endure forever. Now the shin which can be your teeth, means consume or destroy. Princes have persecuted me without a cause, but my heart standeth in awe of thy word. In other words, he didn't get overwhelmed with what was happening, but what really had his heart was, was the word of Allahim that kept his attention. I rejoice at thy word, as one that findeth great spoil. I hate and abhor lying, but thy law do I love. Seven times a day do I praise thee because of thy righteous judgment. Great peace have they which love thy law. Nothing shall offend them. Well, that's powerful saying. Nothing shall offend them. Nothing shall be a stumbling block for them. Yahuwah, I have hoped in thy salvation and done thy commandments. My soul has kept thy testimonies. I love thee exceedingly and have kept thy precepts and thy testimonies. For all thy ways are before me. And then finally we have Tav. Let, and Tav, Tav is a sign or a mark. Let my cry come near before thee, O Yahuwah. Give me understanding according to thy word. Let my supplication come before thee. Deliver me according to thy word. My lips shall utterly praise when thou hast taught me thy statutes. My tongue shall speak of thy word, for all thy commandments are righteous. Let thy hand help me, for I have chosen thy precepts. I long for thy salvation, O Yahuwah, and thy law is my delight. Let my soul live, and it shall praise thee, and let thy judgments help me. I have gone astray like a lost sheep. Seek thy servant, for I do not forget thy commandments. So I hope you were able to somewhere in Psalms 119 see yourself 
see yourself desiring his word more than anything. See yourself as having the word of Allahim as the very center of everything that you're doing. Everything that you're reaching for, your hopes, your dreams. The word of Allahim right there at the center. I want you to find yourself in these Psalms. Because these Psalms are powerful. These Psalms, more than riches, gold and silver, more than anything, they wanted to find his commandments, his statutes, his Torah. That was utterly consuming. We have, we're in a world full of distractions, Ms. Baca. From the TV, sports events, um, we can even get so consumed with different things we put our children in. Instead of teaching them and instructing them and letting them see the love and your dedication to the word of Allahim. Because one of the things uh, that plays a role, especially in your household for your children, they're going to speak the same thing you speak. And they're going to see what you do. Repeat what you do. If you're cursing in your house, you can guarantee you're going to hear them curse. They're going to do it. Because you do it. So, for us to see and have the word of Allahim at the very focal point. I mean, that's our desire. We even get upset when we see others, you know, not that you can change others, but it upsets us when we see others not keeping his commandments. And that's why you're going to find your true self when you develop a love for his commandments, desire, longing to know more, to understand, to have his righteousness be upon you. And for me, you know, some of the things, I, I, there were some uh, very traumatic things that happened uh, this week. And I had to ask myself, you know, what makes one person different from another? What, you know, they can go through similar circumstances, whereas one person fall apart, but you don't fall apart. But you could have fell apart. I mean, all the elements are there. It's simply what you believe, what you believe as far as his commandments and statutes and precepts, they will keep your mind. As, as uh, Shaul said, in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on him. So, you know, even for yourself, you know, take time out today. Go back and read them and, and put yourself into it. Picture yourself when you're, when you're reading through these Psalms. Like he said, I have gone astray like a lost sheep. Have you ever been astray? Picture that. And then look at. See, the, the way that he could find you is because you're marked. Because you have a mark on you. Because you keep his statutes and commandments. Seek thy servant, for I do not forget thy commandments. So you got to see him seeking you. If you're in a place 
that you need help. You got to know that if you're keeping his commandments, he's going to find you. He's going to seek you out. He's going to be there for you. Because, you know, we go through good things. We go through, through trouble. Every, But whatever we go through, our love for his commandments and for him, for his statue, for his judgments, his precepts for the Torah should remain constant. Our heart should be saying, help me, Father, to keep all of these commandments. See, and so so many people are, um, you know, dogmatic and they'll look at someone and uh, that stumbled and failed, but you can stumble and fall too. You know, you could go through things that could make you feel like just giving up, just casting in the towel. But what do you have to do? You have to go back to what he's promised, what he said he would do, and you have to hold on to his word. See, that's what faith really involves. Faith involves, uh, how does faith come? It says, Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of Elohim. So faith is grounded in the word of Elohim, in the, in the Torah, prophets, and writings, seeing those examples. And, and I just try to keep it real. I mean, I've, I've been to the edge before. I've, I felt like falling off before. I've been discouraged. The thing that keeps me Simply as his word, there's nothing great about me that I can come through as pure gold. What brings me through as pure gold is his word. What helps me is his word. What keeps me is his word. He's faithful even when I'm not. My desire is for all of us to be faithful and to show, you know, show the love of Elohim to our brothers and sisters and be there for them. And if you want mercy, if you want compassion, you have to show compassion. Even it says, if you want friends, you got to show yourself friendly. So that's why when you're acting in forgiveness, you're telling the Father, I want to be forgiven. Now, some people are hardcore, and that's fine. But for me, you know, when I hear people's story and hear what they're going through, um, I have like a sense of compassion because I realize it could be me very easy or it has been me at some point. So, you know, um, that's why, you know, when, when you talk to people, you know, you have to allow people to find themselves in Torah. And that's where I direct them. I direct them. I want you to find yourself in the word of Elohim. I don't want you to find my words. Or I don't want me to give you a solution if I can't base it out of Torah or the prophets or writings. I want you to find him. Because when you find him, you find yourself. So I just pray for you, Ms. Baca, and I ask you to continue to pray for me. Um, there are a lot of souls out here that need, need his help and that need help and need encouragement. And the desire is to simply be able to um, encourage those souls and give them the help that they need. 
you know, granted, there are going to be some out here wayward that won't listen, don't want to listen, ain't going to listen. Nothing you can do about that. But there are those that are right there. And sometimes you have to remember the patience that he had with you. Um, showing that same patience with others. So I'm just thankful for all of the Mispaka out there. I appreciate you. Um, no, I haven't forgotten the King series. Whenever he allows me to go back there, we will. Um, I've been... We've been receiving um, emails about um, people want um, asking me if I was a, a Nabi. That's a prophet. Um, and they had seen my um, video on YouTube and they were just wondering if I could help them in that direction. So I'm here to help in any way I can. I don't have all solutions. I don't, um, I don't. I'm not might not be the smartest, but the one thing I, I will try to do is be sincere, um, give you what the Father says, and try to point you in the right direction. Because one thing about it, um, when we tell people things, give them advice, we're held accountable. And I want to make sure that the advice and the direction and what I'm teaching, that when Judgment Day comes, that I won't have to hear a wicked servant, but I'll hear a good and faithful servant. So it's one thing we have to um, endeavor to do. So I'm praying as time moves forward, I'll do more lessons on the prophetic calling, uh, prophecy, and I'm, I'm not talking about prophecy as far as biblical prophecy. I'm just talking about operating in the gift of prophecy. And um, I'll hopefully do more lessons on that and to help people understand. Because remember, it, it, it was all throughout the uh, Tanakh. That's the Old Testament where you see prophecy was working. There were prophets and they're still prophets. And so... We'll, we'll definitely um, address that. So just know that I love you all and I appreciate. And if you need to get a hold of me, you can email me at info at living And sometimes you're new to the walk and some pe sometimes people can be very cruel. I experienced that cruelty when I initially came into the walk where people didn't want to give me, you know, information. I was, cause I was seeking, I wanted to know what the father's name was. What's the Messiah's name? What, what, you know, I, I just was seeking. And I had one individual basically told me I wasn't worthy. <laughs> I was like, okay. So I just kept, I didn't let it discourage me. I just kept seeking, seeking his face. So you might have run across the same thing. You just keep in his, seeking his face and pursuing him and he will show you. Sometimes it's, you know, we want things just placed in our lap. But he, he tells us, Mashiach told us, action it shall be given, knocking it shall be open, seeking you shall find. So you have to continually seek after him so let's pray Miss Baka. father I pray for those that are trying to find themselves I pray father that they will find themselves in the scripture father all I can do is point and direct I pray father that you give them a heart and mind that they would seek out your face that they would desire your wisdom, which comes through your word, more than riches, more than anything. You know, some people struggle. They want a husband. They want a wife. They want, you know, Ish, Isha. But Father, I pray that their desire first would be for this word. Because this word would 
prepare them to be an Isha. It will prepare him to be an Ish. Father, do this and help them to realize. Open their eyes. Pull the veil off. Give them this knowledge from the tree of life. Father, and I thank you for all of those that have tuned in. I pray for them, Father, that struggle. I pray for them that go that are going through, Father, and see no way out. I pray, Father, that you would be that hand that guides them, that leads them, so that it will be a witness to them of your greatness. Now, Father, be with them. Show them truth. There are many teachers out here, Father, and there are many people that have itching ears, and there are many teachers that will teach to those itching ears. But I pray, Father, that you have us with a sincere heart. I pray that you would have us with a sincere ear and that our voice would be in tune with your word and that we would only speak your word and speak according to your statutes, commandments, precepts, and judgments. Now, Father, have your way in our lives that we might be lifted up. Help us to find ourselves this day. Help us to find the true us, which can only be identified in your instructions. And I say, Toda, Father, Toda, Reba, for all that you do for us. In the name of Mashiach, Yahusha, Hallel to Yahuwah. Oh, thank you, Father. Hallel to Yahuwah. Amen. All right, Mr. Bakal, just, just in the order, um, you know, the Hebrew Ten Commandments still available if you have children and want to be able to show them pictures of the commandments and give them illustrations. is a very good way to do it. Also, the Passover story, um, just letting you know those are available um, so that you can have them. Now, if you haven't joined our bookmarker witnessing team, uh, you still can. We don't charge for the bookmarkers. Uh, sometimes people will leave a donation, and that's fine. Um, but if you will um, go to the website, www.bm.hebrewfoundation.org, and you can request the bookmarkers. Just make sure you give me your complete address. Give me your complete address. So that I can mail those out to you. Now, um, if you would like to support us, you can. Um, you can do it by mail, PayPal, or an online giving tool. Um, but, you know, if, if sometimes we're in a place where we can't support. And I understand that. I've been there. Uh, I can remember when I barely had two nickels to rub together. So, send, me, send up prayers. You know, send your prayers up um, for the Father and let him know, um, you know, to help us and give us understanding so that we can continue to reach out and help others. So this is our prayer that you will continue to, oh man, I don't almost went up. What's that, an hour and a half? Man. Time flies, see? Now you can un kind of understand what the psalmist is talking about. You know, when you start talking about this word of Allah. So continue to seek his face. If if there are issues that you don't have understanding in, um, whether it's calendar-based, whether it's Torah-based, you know, you can seek out, you know, and ask different mores, but make sure when you're asking that you ask the Father to direct you to where you get the right information. Because it's so easy because you want um, it to work a certain way to find the information for how you want it to work. But you want to make sure you're in line with him. And in your sinking information, I'll give you an example. When all through the process of learning calendar stuff. I, I never condemn anybody else for what they believe or teach because I'm trying to get a solid foundation in what the Father wants as far as that. And then I don't condemn others. 
I try to teach others. See, that's a difference. So when you're condemning people, people are less likely to try to learn or even listen. But when you're trying to teach and you teach from a standpoint of love, you know, not if you don't follow this, you're going to hell, but you're teaching them from a standpoint of love. Because you remember when I first came in this, it was a lot of stuff I didn't know. It's a lot of stuff I still don't know and trying to learn. Because we're learning, we're going to be learning until we go, until we leave this earth or until the Mashiach comes back. Because remember, we weren't there during the time of Moses and so much has changed. So make sure that you seek his face. Alrighty. So that's enough, Miss McCaw. I appreciate <coughs> you all. And actually, we have um, 